Syracuse is 22nd ranked in the country. How exciting is that? Finally, a good football team, perhaps, on the hill in Syracuse. Owen Valentine, Matt Bonaparte, we'll talk about that and a lot more on Locked On Syracuse today. It starts right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Monday episode. Welcome to Lockdown Syracuse. I'm Matt Bonaparte. That is Owen Valentine. Thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. And I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Lockdown College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of things and talk about a 59 to nothing victory, just want to first say thank you to the listeners and the viewers. We are nearing 800 subscribers on YouTube, trying to get to a thousand before the end of football season. Don't forget about the very philanthropic Owen Valentine's offer of a four uh ticket package if there's a you know there's a case for five if, if there's a, if there's a case you, you might can get present five. a case for five <laughs> uh but we're trying to get there uh to a thousand so we can uh, have that on the table um and then also we were alerted that september has been the or was i guess we're in october now september was the uh most most successful, most listened to month in lockdown Syracuse history. So we want to thank everybody for viewing and listening. Uh, and then last bit of housekeeping, we're going to have a mailbag episode this week, like we did last week. So please, we don't know which day it's going to be, might be tomorrow. So uh, if you can, please send us an email with any questions you have. Uh, the email address is L O Syracuse 44. That's the digits four, four at gmail.com. Send in your questions there. If you don't want to do that, uh, go follow us on Twitter, shoot us a DM tweet at us. We'll probably throw out a, a tweet so you can reply under it. Follow us on Twitter at L O underscore Syracuse, or you can just drop them in uh, the YouTube comments. That's how we did it last week as well. So three places, three main places that uh, we can find your questions. So please throw them there. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's talk Syracuse. 59 oh, yeah. to nothing. Uh, the Orange beat the Seahawks of Wagner down in Staten Island, uh, the, which is where they reside. They haven't won a football game since uh, September 28th, 2019. That streak continues after Syracuse battered them. Uh, no, Neither of us were right in our predictions. I thought I had a chance with the yeah. Syracuse score but I had no chance at the Wagner score. They were never scoring a point. My prediction was 67-10. Yours was 51-3. Scores 59 zip. Not bad by any means. I think we were both in the ballpark. Uh, crazy that, you know, we talked about the 54 and a half point spread and how can Syracuse pull that off? And, and somehow they did. They looked like what you want them to. And here we go again. My dogs get excited when Syracuse football <laughs> wins. They're barking downstairs. They're excited. We're excited. It's 5-0, and oh, right? Like you can, you can look at this and you can talk about it as much as you want and you can dissect little things, positives, negatives, whatever you land on. But at the end of the day, this is a 5-0 and oh football team for the first time in 45 years. 35. But yes, 35 years, <laughs> quick math, 1987, yeah. uh, 87 is time. 35 years. Yeah, it's the first time in 35 years. And you're just it's awesome. It really is amazing to see that this is a five and oh football team. Have they played the greatest teams? No. Did they have a couple of cakewalk games? Yes, but they've won. I think Purdue, that win is looking better and better and better. Every time I watch Purdue get on the football field, this yeah. team is five and oh with three power five wins going into a bye week. They're ranked 22nd in the country, ranked for the first time since early, early 2019. And I think they're going to get a free pass to possibly the top 20 if a few things go in their favor next week. And all they have to do is sit back and get prepared for NC State in a couple of weeks. 
there's definitely potential for that. Uh, even or especially because, like you said, uh, that Purdue win continues to get better, and it got better with a win over Minnesota uh, yeah. this past Saturday. And Minnesota obviously was ahead of Syracuse; they were twenty three. Syracuse was unranked. Now the uh, the turntables, as the kids say, oh, and yeah. <laughs> Syracuse is at twenty one, uh, and Minnesota gone. Um, but Syracuse with a win that everybody expected, everybody. Uh, pretty much banked on, and rightfully so, because Wagner really, I mean, the, that looked like the saddest group of players to have ever put football pads on in their lives. They just never had a chance. Like, it wasn't, it was kind of like a real just, all right, show up, get killed, go home kind of thing. Like, it was, it was really, it was, it was not something to, to be happy about. But that being said, me, you, and everybody else in the Twitter sphere was screaming on Twitter uh, to bench Sean and Schrader at the, at yeah. half. Sh- Sh- Sean went into halftime having rushed for 218 yards. Like, that's insane, nonsensical. So why leave him in? They, they were winning 49 nothing, and they decided oh, you got to leave him in. Like, why? And then he, like, got hurt-ish. Uh, I assume he's fine. He looked fine. But he yeah. got hurt. Ish, exactly. That was one of my things. And then Dino says post game, you know, everybody does that. Everybody Don't keeps care. their starters in. They needed one more series to work on a few things. You're up 49 0. I think half. Dino's just too you nice agreed. of a guy, and he didn't want to do that. You agreed at halftime to basically put a mercy rule on with 10 minute quarters instead of 15s. Does that not say enough? You do not need to put your starters in for one more drive to work out the kinks. There's no kinks against Wagner. There are not yeah. kinks against Wagner. You didn't punt in this football game. Okay, what kinks did you have to work out? Garrett Trader played a perfect game. What yeah. was there to work out? Sean Tucker has 220 yards. What is there to work out? The end. Pull them out. Sit yeah, them down. Stay healthy. Why are you risking something? Right? This is the thing. Like, yes. I understand, and this is a tangent, but I'm going to hit it quick. Dino's job is safe right now, and he might finish out his contract because of a 5-0 and start, genuinely. Uh, with that and the buyout, like realistically, that might be safety until his contract ends, and I don't think I'm overreacting in saying that, but it is decisions like this that even though he has the security of that buyout and the fact that he's 5-0, and that continue to have people asking questions about his ability to be the head coach of a high-quality and I guess better football team than you've seen the last couple of years. It is silly decisions, time management stuff we look at from last season, decisions like that. Just be smart, right? You're not calling plays on either side of the ball. You were supposed to be the man of reason and the man of logic, and it just seems like the logic and reasoning isn't there time and time again. This was idiotic, and you almost, almost saw everybody's worst thought and biggest nightmare come to fruition as Tucker goes down on that first series. Almost saw that against Louisville week one as well. Uh, yeah. But obviously a different situation there, but um, totally off topic thing that I was just looking at the box score and I saw, and I remember from the game is that Anthony Queeley caught a pass. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't convinced that Anthony Queeley still existed. Like he <laughs> was in the main three trio wide receivers last year. And this is the first time we see him all season long is against Wagner week five. Yeah. Like what? Um, he gets nine pass catchers in this game. Yeah. Uh, and not a single incompletion. Like you said, 17 to 17 for Schrader one for one for Carlos Del Rio Wilson. Uh, LaQuint Allen. How about this stat? LaQuint Allen first uh, 90 yard rush for a Syracuse running back since like 1929 or something like that. Uh, which means that like every great Syracuse running back just didn't do that. It's just like, how about, insane. Le- how about Le- <laughs> 28 nuts. yards per carry in this game? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's similar to what like Sean did last year against Albany. Um, but very good to see Sean with a 10 yard per carry game, uh, which yes. is nuts, but uh, it, it really shows you how good of an athlete that guy is when he plays against like Joe Schmoes. The Sean Tucker jersey's back up for the first time since Louisville, uh, which means he he has shown me something once again. Yes, it's Wagner, but it was nice to see him come out and get that that big time numbers game to just remind you, like as you said, how dominant he can be. 
uh, in certain situations. And this was just like everything that he could have done, he did in this game. It was really fun to watch uh, outside of the, you know, last series where he goes down. But the whole thing like really was so cool to see just a game like this, because I feel like even though, yes, this is Wagner, but like the Wagner equivalent games um, that we've seen in the past have not been dominant like this. And maybe that has a little bit to do with how genuinely in the basement Wagner is, but like, it was just cool to see them come out and do what they were supposed to do and do what you thought they were going to do and be a presence on offense, be a presence on defense. I said, I wanted to see a zero on the board for Wagner and they did that right? Yes, Wagner has been blown out in their three games already this season, but I think they were still averaging almost two touchdowns a game uh, in those three games. So like they had been scoring points, yes, against lesser teams, but Rutgers in the mix there, I believe. Uh, And and Syracuse keeps them to that zero, which I think is really a nod to, was it seven against Rutgers? Uh, Still, Syracuse better than Rutgers. Um, <laughs> that's your barometer. <laughs> okay. I guess that's the property at. Owen over here. All right. Uh, before we go any further, let's take a quick break. Uh, I got to tell you about uh, LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be a hundred percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why. You have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Very easy to go over to LinkedIn and create a free job post. One of the first things you want to do after that is add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on or focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply okie dokie artichoke um let's continue to talk syracuse football uh wagner has been taken care of syracuse five and oh for the first time since 1987 when they went 11 0 and one in the undefeated season in that late 80s uh campaign syracuse i don't know what did i say (laughs) no i said 45 earlier i know it now it's 35 (laughs) years ago we're good. It is 35, yes. I was going to say also, uh, just what's it kind of interesting about this is that when you play a terrible team like Wagner and they just boost your stats, that makes them look so much better compared to the country. Like, when you win a game 59 zip, your offense yes. goes way higher and so does your defense. So yeah. now Syracuse's offense, this is t- entirely just uh, statistically based on points per game and opposing points per game. Syracuse is now 23rd in the nation in terms of points per game, 38.4, and 10th in the country in opposing points per game with just 14 points against them each game. Obviously, that was boosted by the Wagner game and probably the UConn one as well. But still, five weeks into the season to be able to say that you beat three Power 5 teams, I still think that's impressive. Obviously, I don't think they're the 10th best defense in the country or maybe the 23rd best offense, but... They're closer than that than you think, probably. Yeah, and I mean, the Louisville game is not to be stricken from that list, too, right? Like a 31-7 game is boosting both of those stats. Uh, And I will say, I mean, yes, you let up 29 points to Purdue when you were looking much better than that for a while in terms of where they were at score-wise. Not saying Purdue was playing well, but outside of the 29 to Purdue, like 20 points against Virginia is not bad by any means. Uh, and they, they've they scored their points offensively this season, which is good to see. So overall, I mean, at 5-0 and and now with a little boost to see, you know, be top 25 and the top 10 in terms of defensive points allowed is awesome. And it, it, it really is cool to see, even for whether it's for one physical game of football, uh, but to see them at 5-0, and to see them at 22nd in the country is something that I didn't even ponder. For this season and I don't think many of us were considering that 
this season when we looked into this and and what with so many questions about this team how's the the experience of the o-line what are we going to see from the receivers can the d-line step things up what do we see out of special teams out of schrader like there were infinite questions surrounding this team a new coordinator tony white coming back all of these questions no one really pinned this i i mean hand in the air i had him four and eight I will say that all the time. I had them at four and eight this year. They're five and oh, they're a ranked football team. And even if, you know, in two weeks they get spanked by NC State, drop out of the rankings, never to return to them this year. I I, I don't think it can be overstated how awesome it is that this is the situation and this is the football team we are talking about for this point in time. Totally. I, I 100% agree with you. One of 16 teams uh, that is currently undefeated in the country, which I just think is like awesome. I mean, that is really, really cool. And like you said, Owen, I 100% agree. Like, even if next time out, not this weekend, of course, but the next weekend, October 15th, that's Saturday against NC State, even if they show up to that game back in the dome and NC State comes in and just rolls through them and Devin Leary throws for like 400 yards and however many touchdowns and they get destroyed. I don't like, I'm it's fine. Like I have had, I mean, we're five. We're looking at a five and O team. Like, yeah. I don't care. Um, all right. They're five. Obviously, and one. <laughs> yeah. Obviously I want more, right? Like keep yeah. doing it. I and want this NC State shocked. game to be close in that. And but still. I think there's a small camp of people out there who are probably saying like, yeah, great. They had their fun. They've won five games, but look at the upcoming stretch. They go zero and six here. And then they're five and six looking at BC. First of all, I would be so hard pressed to believe that they don't win one of Notre Dame Pitt or FSU. They lose to NC state and Clemson. Like fine. Like th those are two top 15 teams right now. Like whatever. One of which is top five. Like that's fine. All right. I don't really expect to beat either of those teams right now. Notre Dame Pitt and Florida state. I definitely do. I mean, those two of those teams Pitt and Florida state were, uh, they were top 25 teams before yesterday. So yeah. or before today, I guess it's before yesterday for the uh, for the listeners. listeners. Yes, um, but you know you're gonna have your ups this season. You're gonna have your downs, and you have to expect that at some point there will be uh, rough times this year, just because that's how Syracuse athletics goes. It's never perfect. Um, so I mean, I think that you're totally right, Owen. We have to be happy with what we're seeing right now, but at the same time, yeah. You know, they're, they're undefeated. <laughs> you kind of want to keep it's going. an undefeated football team. It is an undefeated football team, right? Have there been moments where I'm still pulling my hair out? Yes. But all of a sudden. When Garrett Schrader runs 12 yards backwards and goes down without getting rid of the football. Yeah. That's yeah. when I'm trying to pull my hair out, man. Right. But like It hasn't that, been sure. a perfect thing, but the record is perfect. And that is that is everything you need to say. And I will say this, and I'm sure we will get into this later in the week and even next week as we've got what, 10 episodes between now and the next game that Syracuse football plays, the the gauntlet that still is the gauntlet of the next six weeks, I think it's also a really cool thing to see the sort of flipping of what are 50-50 games for Syracuse now. Uh, and I think that's something that's really neat. Like this Notre Dame game, I'm not exactly sure I want to chalk it as a 50-50 yet, but like I see Pittsburgh – I see Florida State both as as coin flip games and Florida State coming into the year. I wasn't sold on them being a coin flip or that was like a different coin flip game. But Florida State has shown that they're they're a legitimate football team this year. But I think those games with Pitt and Florida State are very, very much anyone's game uh, in those situations. Yes, NC State is going to be really tough. They're a phenomenal team. Clemson, we know what you're going to expect from Clemson. They're outstanding. I think they should be ranked fourth, not fifth. I think they're better than Michigan, uh, but that's not the point of this episode. Wake, Wake is good. I will say that. I, I am very much high on Wake. I think they're a very good football team. But even though you have this gauntlet of six games, it is really nice and interesting, at least in my eyes, to see – how my opinion of these games has changed. Like Notre Dame preseason was they were what, top, or fifth in the country to start the year, were they? Or sixth in the country to start the year? Six, I believe six. Um, there wasn't a, a thought in my mind that that was going to be a close football game. Uh, and yeah, now everybody I think thought they were going to get decimated, and now it, it is, it's a win. 
it's winnable. Yeah, it is very much winnable. So yes, I mean, NC State and point, Clemson are so tough. But Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, Florida they State were five to start the year. They were five. Okay, yeah. that three game stretch of Notre Dame, Pitt, and Florida State, like you can win those three games, and that's not a stretch to say. It's a stretch to say, you know, you're going to win the NC State game or you're going to win the Clemson game. I'm not saying it's completely out of the picture, but it's you know the traditional likelihood of a Syracuse football team beating those teams is what you're going to see. The other three games, like you can win those football games. And that is why I think at 5-0 and and at 22nd in the country with the team that is there and what we have seen from them, even with some of the negative moments, we talked about last week that 7-5 and would be kind of a success. 8-4 and really isn't out of the works by any means. And Mentally, I I am starting to sit eight and four, and be relatively comfortable with that thought. Uh, I think this is an eight win football team, whether that is in the regular season or including a bowl game. I think this is an eight win football team, uh, and I think you can shock, regardless of how the rest of the season goes, an eight win football team as a success, even if it means totally. that you went five and zero oh and then dipped at the end. An eight-win football team has blown us out of the water and is 100% a success. And I think that is where, if you had me write a number down for what this team is, I would say it is an eight-and-five team uh, after a bowl game, uh, whether that was an eight-and-four team that loses a bowl game or a seven-and-five team that wins a bowl game. This is an eight-win football team, which is I, – I truly can't believe that – that is a confident sentence that I am uttering right now, uh, given where I stood six weeks ago. Okay, I got to take a quick break to tell you about Bet Online before we go any further. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles of analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. That's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, let's wrap up here. Uh, And the thing I'm thinking is, we talked about going into week three. We talked about how Purdue was going to be such a huge test and how we kind of knew the identity of the football team or how we would know the identity of the football team after that game. Uh, and whether, and you said it really well after one of the, I think maybe one of the pods that week, it was if they win, they're real. If not, they stink. <laughs> and while it was, uh, it was simple. It's, kind of true and how uh you know evaluating teams get so analytical and whatnot a lot of times is the good teams win the bad teams lose um but i think that this nc state game obviously because they're a better opponent but also because it's been it's gonna have been a wagner game a virginia game and a virginia team that wasn't that strong that syracuse barely beat and now a bye week uh from the last time we played a really or we watched syracuse play a really really solid team um so nc state's a huge test and we're kind of reframing the season a little bit and saying that yes purdue is a huge test but the real big test of the year right now is nc state kind of like at the end of a baseball season where you say every series is the biggest one or like every pitch is the biggest pitch um so i mean what i'm saying is at some point later in the season we're going to say maybe the wake forest game is the big test or whatever but at this point NC State is a huge test for this team because, dude, imagine if they beat NC State. Like, that would be insane. I don't think anybody, like, truly, like, some people are going to sit there and say, like, oh, yeah, like, this is undefeated. Like, Syracuse undefeated. Like, they're going to go in and they're going to win that game. Like, this is an undefeated football team. I think in everybody's heart of hearts in Syracuse and Syracuse football land, everybody knows or at least thinks, like, they're probably going to lose this game. And, like, that's fine. And I am kind of there, too, because I guess I just I haven't fully bought in as much as maybe I thought I did. But imagine they go in there and they beat NC State like you kind of have to have the most like the utmost faith in them. Uh, And then going into Clemson, then we're going to be talking about that Clemson. because that's going to be even a bigger test, of course, because Clemson's better and it's on the road. So Syracuse has its first road uh, challenge. But right now you're looking at it 
NC State, and that team is really, really good, man. And we know it would be. Um, I don't know. I I can't you know. wrap my head around the thought of what would be coming out of my, I guess, my mouth on the Monday episode if they beat <laughs> NC State. Like I, I'm laughing right now because I do not, I don't know how I could put into words what that would be and what that would be like. Syracuse would legitimately be a top 15, top fringe top 10 team in the country if they beat NC State and would be 6-0. and And that's absurd. But I think you are 100% right. And we've talked about this at different points about, you know, one of them being the the sort of fluid interpretation of success and how right now we see success and how that can shift and then how, you know, your sort of true tests adjust based on how you're playing. This NC State game says so much about every aspect of this team. How do you do against a defense that maybe is good enough to to not have to stack the box completely? I'm not saying that means they're not going to emphasize Sean Tucker and preventing Sean Tucker from going nuts. But NC State is a team that you know has the players and the personnel defensively to not have to truly pack the box as much as you've seen other teams do in an attempt to stint Sean Tucker. NC State can play you a little bit more in their traditional defense and how they want to go about playing to their strength. So how you can compete with that, plus the fact that I mean, the NC State offense is, is a treat to watch. How does the defense show out in, in a game like that? Right, We've seen Garrett Williams uh, go against NFL quality receivers and top tier receivers. And sometimes he's looked outstanding and some plays, you know, he's been beat and that happens, but that's another game where, you know, you're going to look at the secondary, you're going to look at the D line and can they get pressure past an O line that is, you know, a top tier uh, are on a top tier team in this, in, you know, the 2020 season, that is going to tell you so much about this team, the remainder of the season, and I'm not saying you have to go out there and win for this to say what – or to say something positive about Syracuse football. Uh, you can you can lose this game very much and, and still be – or you can very much lose this game and, and still walk away thinking, yes, that proved that Syracuse is a legitimate football team this year. And I, I think there are – they need to play this game close. They need to play a smart game. Uh, you need to to build off the momentum, even if it's – you know, almost like a placebo after coming off of a 59-0 Wagner win, you need to milk that momentum for everything because you are going to to need everything in order to to make this a good game and, and to give yourself a chance to win, uh, what, 13 days from now, four, 12 yeah. days from now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's all we got today on this episode, your Monday episode of Lockdown Syracuse. Thanks for making it your first listen every day. Get more on the ACC by making Lockdown ACC your second listen every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Lockdown take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Make Lockdown ACC your second listen. That is Lockdown ACC. Uh, I'm Matt Bonaparte. He's Owen Valentine. Please do not forget, throw us some questions, potentiality for the episode to be tomorrow. So get those in. Uh, but otherwise, we will see you then. Peace.